Hi there, welcome to COSD Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 8 on Linear Functions. Uh, this first one is uh, based mostly on your lessons, so let's kind of talk through parts of it here together. It says, in a certain city in France, they gain two minutes of daylight, so we're gaining two minutes of daylight each day after the spring equinox, usually in March. But after the uh, aut autumnal, uh, autumn, <laughs> autumnal equinox, usually in September, they lose two minutes of daylight. So first we're going to gain two, and then we're going to lose two, all right, at these certain points in the year. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Which of the graphs is most likely to represent the graph of daylight for the month after the spring? So remember in the spring, it says that in the spring, what's happened in the spring? we're gaining daylight time. And we can see all these have minutes of sunlight. They all have minutes of sunlight. And we have days past the equinox. So in here, because we're gonna be gaining two minutes, we wanna look for a graph that's gonna indicate that we're gaining two minutes of time. Now I know they're not labeled with marks you know exactly where is one minute, two minutes, that's okay. But there should be, with a gain, we should look for a graph that shows some sort of increase with time from where we're starting from. For two, it says which of the graphs is most likely to represent the graph of daylight for the month after the autumn equinox. Now in autumn, we're losing, so we should see some sort of decrease right, in the amount of light with time. So some sort of decrease in our graph here. And looking at what's happening here, we see we so far we have one where there's no change, right? No change there. We can see a decrease happening here. We have an increase happening here, and an increase happening here. Now, hard part is I do have two increases, which means it's tough to know which one's number one. And then it says why are the other graphs not likely to represent either month? So let's look at a couple things here real quick. The difference between these two happens to be where it starts at, right? Notice where it starts and what we're talking about. They both have an increase. This one is the minutes of sunlight. In this one here, how many minutes of sunlight are happening at the, um, in this case here, the equinox? Whether this is the first day of March or the second day of, of September, or the first day of March for December, how many minutes of sunlight do you see there? That would be zero, as in zero, as in none. It's pitch black, there's no sunlight, okay? Over here, the starting point is at least having some number, whatever number that's gonna be. It could be an hour, it could be 180 minutes, I have no idea. But over here, there's no sunlight whatsoever. Here, there's some. So you need to decide between those two which one makes the most sense for what we're talking about here. On this one, we can see that there's no change taking place. So nothing is happening. So that means that the number of minutes of sunlight is exactly the same no matter what. It's always exactly the same. Okay, so what could that represent? All right, so those are your questions for the first three. Uh, let me move down to number four. And number four, we'll actually, we'll solve a little bit. It says graph and label each equation. So here we go, let's do this here. So first of all, we have line R and we have a y-intercept at 0 comma 3, 0 comma 3 is our y-intercept. So we can go up to 1, 2, 3 and put a point right there. Then we can look at our slope. Our slope is what? Negative 4. So we're going to go down 4 and over 1. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 and over 1. And we can do that again and go 1, 2, 3, 4 and over 1. Okay, if I want to go the other direction, I would go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and then over this way, one. And you can see that's true when you connect your dots. So our first graph, our first line is right here. And we would label that as R. There's R. Okay. Our next one we have, our y-intercept is happening at zero comma negative five. So here's zero comma one, two, three, four, five, right there. Our slope is what? Here's our slope. Our slope is up three over four. So we can go ahead and go one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four, and up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four. So we have three points. That's enough for us. We can get our straight edge and draw our line, and that becomes line S. Okay. For line T, 
this happens where x equals negative 6. So we look over and go, where's negative 6 at? There it is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's right here. So x equals negative 6, so this line is going to be all the way up and down, right there, and that's line t. y equals 8 is up here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so we're going to draw a line at 8 all the way across. And that's going to be line U. All right, and that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.